Uh, Mr. Thompson, a very good evening from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Good evening to you and happy award day for safety and health at work. Thank you. I wish you the same. Tell us what yes. this day is about. Why is it important for us to commemorate it? Thank you very much for this question. It's all about safety at work. Even you that's working there, it's important for us to understand that where we work is for us to leave. No one says us to go up in the morning uh, without um, having in the mind that I'm going to come back and meet my family. So in 2003, the International Labor Organization thought, thought it wise to set aside a particular day for the celebration of World Day of Safety and Health. And the day being the 28th of April was set aside for that. And aside from that also, it also to create awareness and to raise the consciousness of people on how a company could realize their objectives without causing much harm to the staff, the contractors, the visitors, and also protect the environment. These are very important while we work. It's also important that we observe those things and ensure that we are not causing harm to the society, we are not causing harm to the environment, and we are not causing harm to our health. All right, what are some of the emerging trends that you know, workers should be aware of and be in the know? Yes, it's important that when starting for jobs, as the case may be, we should conduct what is called job hazard analysis. And that job hazard analysis is important when searching for a job. And the, the, the major thing people need to do there is to identify the scope and the main objectives. And when you identify those things, you break them down, you know, identify the hazards and the threats, access, you know, to any potential hazards, and also define the recovery, uh, uh, what is it called, the recovery uh, measures. And you state these things clearly. And in identify those things, you need to involve the employees. You need to get the, the do a kind of um, initiating it, get some interview, some background check, do some of the simple things that you can conduct. You can see around places where you went, maybe you went to look for a job now. You have to do the analysis, ask the people, look at the environment, check all these things. That's why hazard identification is very important for us to know. And when you are dealing, when you are dealing with this, uh, this product, it's also important that we rank them, you know, set priorities for the jobs that we want to take. Because if any hazard is, exists at or put an immediate danger to an employee's health, take immediate action to protect that worker. It's very important when we are taking up a job. I know there are different workspaces and environments, but are there some basic rule for anybody who is starting uh, work in a new environment in terms of safety that they should know in the workspace? Exactly that. This is important because we, you know, in this part of the world, when we want to take up employment, uh, you only have an interaction with the HR, you know, the human resource management department, and also get an interview. But this is where the safety manager comes in. This is where the safety officer of the company comes in. And when you are making such, uh, uh, you are making such, uh, maybe proposal is being given to you in a job place, please ask for the safety uh, job safety or the safety reports of that particular uh, company or that uh, particular organization to know whether your health you know, is suitable to that kind of job because uh, there's something we call um, reviewing the accident history. When you review the, the history of the employees of that work site, you know, know the accident, the occupational illness that are, and the things that are needed to treat or the losses, you know, that, are, that were experienced at the, at the last, uh, maybe people that are working there, then you can be able to identify the major hazards to your health and to the environment, know if you can pick that job or you cannot pick that job. Because these, these, these things are indicators that the existing hazards control. If there is none, you may not be adequate or deserve more scrutiny. Um, all, all of these things you're saying without laws, it doesn't really um, hold for, for uh, hold workers, I mean, employers accountable. So I'd like to find out from you, across Africa, do we have laws that make it compulsory for employers to make sure there is safety mechanism in the workplace? Yes, yeah, it might interest you to know that 
that the safety Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria is the, the regulating management body of safety in Nigeria. You know, it, it's established it has, it has an act, the Act of 2014, Act 2, you know, which establishes the management of safety, you know, uh, measures and safety procedures in Nigeria. For the point that we was coming, in the Media Center for Safety Reporting now, we are trying to create awareness, people to understand that there is such law. Each one, as the case may be, has it in their own law that they can collaborate with every other organization to ensure that we have safety managers and we have safety units or safety departments in organizations. And also conduct safety auditing and safety uh, inspection in companies and in also in organizations, as the case may be. Very, right. very uh, interesting. Lagos State, uh, Lagos State has pioneered the establishment, pioneered the establishment of um, Lagos State Safety Commission. The question is, are those people professionals in the first place? You need to under understand that we need to take the issue of safety so importantly, and that is why we are raising, last year we, we launched a data. As the case may be right now, we don't have a data in Nigeria on the level of, you know, the number of accidents that have been uh, caused in different areas. Uh, no thanks to the, 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 what is going on with the level. So you, uh, are, you, are you saying there are no laws? Uh, I, I, I probably missed that. Are you saying there are no laws across Africa or um, there is need for laws to be enacted? Quickly, in 30 seconds, please. I think the uh, African, African Union should take a look at the level laws that different countries have and also make sure that they come together and um, follow what Nigeria is trying to do with the establishment of the Eastbound Act. Look at it again holistically and review from country to country what are the hazards that are, you know, that are involved or what are the hazards that are most endemic in this area and know how it can be abated or how it can be minimized. And street right. compliance is very important. It's very important that workers, that employees and employers should make sure that they adhere to the street in, uh, 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 adherence to the safety rules of that community, safety rules of the okay. country. I think that's a good place to leave it, Mr. Thompson. Thank you very much for speaking with us. My pleasure.